Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to River Heights Vineyard Church. Really happy to see you at the welcome and give you for worship today. My name is John. I'm one of the worship pastors here. Um, I get to help lead our service this morning along with our fine team. We're really happy to worship together. I invite you to stand as you're able and or willing as we start our service. Uh, and I'll pray for us as we come into worship. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we're here for you. We're here because we want more of you. We've tasted your love in your lives or we are interested. And Jesus, we ask that you would come and bless us in specific ways this morning as we gather. In the season of Advent, God, I pray that you would teach us again how to wait, how to want you, how to look for Jesus. And you come show us yourself today, Holy Spirit. Amen. So join us as we sing.
This is the second week of Advent. In church history, Advent is a season of waiting, expectation, and hope. In Advent, we remember how God's people longed for deliverance from evil and oppression. They waited expectantly, looking for the Savior that God had promised to send. They anticipated the day a Savior would come. When God would break through the darkness to save them and make them free. Today we light the candle of peace. Luke 1, 30 through 33 says, But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. you got. Friends, you're welcome to have a seat at this time. We're going to move into announcements and then the message 
and Hopewell is here with an announcement. of meeting you yet. We are so glad that you're here this morning. Happy Sunday. If you are here for the first time in particular, welcome. We are so glad to see you. To show our gratitude that you came and to show our enthusiasm for meeting you, you are welcome to meet uh, with Rena, who's going to give our message today, outside just past those double doors after the service. She would love to greet you and learn a little bit more about you and give you a free gift to say thank you for coming. Our purpose at River Heights is the most exciting one in the world, we believe, and it is to help a growing number of people love God, love others, and change the world. One way that we do this is through our various ministries. That includes our Sunday services, it includes Celebrate Recovery, Loaves and Fishes, Children's Church, Downstairs, Middle Church. One of the amazing things about giving financially is we get to see God doing these things around us. Someone reconciling with a loved one through Celebrate Recovery, a child having a profound experience with the Lord. And when we give, we get to see our hands working alongside God's to do those things, even if you're not directly involved in those ministries. You can give through PushPay. Info is on the screen behind me. You can also give cash and checks in those connection card boxes at the back. I'd love to pray for this. God, thank you that you invite us into the work of building your good kingdom. We want to join you in it. Would you bless what we have to give today and turn it into more people loving you and enjoying you and coming to know you. Amen. If you got a paper program today, you can take out that cardstock sheet in the middle of it. Here's mine from this morning with my terrible handwriting on it. Don't judge. This is a chance for you to introduce yourself to us. Whether you're here for the first time or you're a regular, you can just write your name on the top of it, any contact information that you feel like sharing. Even if all you write is your name, the staff and prayer team of the church this week will be praying for God to bless you this week. On the back, you're able to share a little bit more information about yourself, uh, especially um, current needs that you're having, prayer requests and praise reports, also called God stories. On the top paragraph, you can share any ways that you need to see God supporting you or people in your life, and we will pray for that each week. Um, and that can be confidential. We also have a chance at the bottom to share God stories. These are ways that we can give shout-outs to our friend of the Holy Spirit and celebrate, either just privately by writing it here um, and sharing with the prayer team, but we can also celebrate it in public if you would like it to be shared. It can be uh, shown on the screen with just your initials or anonymously before service. I've already filled mine out today. I learned right before first service that my dear friend Ayan just welcomed a healthy baby girl after a difficult pregnancy. God is good. I am so stoked to meet that baby this week. Few upcoming events that are especially exciting. Friday, December 15th at 7 p.m., there is a party for the ladies of River Heights. This is a chance to sing, participate in games, earn some prizes, and eat food. In fact, you can bring a snack if you are able to share with the rest of the crew. You are also invited to wear a heinous Christmas sweater. I feel like as tacky Christmas sweaters have gotten more mainstream, they have to get more and more radical and elaborate and ridiculous each year. So um, I forgot to wear mine this morning, but it would have been, that would have been suitable. It has a really strange looking unidentifiable animal on it that could be like a gray pig or a rhino. It's, it's great, I'll, I'll try to wear it next week and you can see it. Um, you can also wear your favorite Christmas jammies. All right, some Christmas week events. On Sunday, December 24th, that is Christmas Eve, there are no morning services. Sleep in, unwrap some presents if that's your tradition, drink some eggnog. Uh, you are invited warmly to come at 3 p.m. or at 4.30 p.m. to our services. No morning service. These afternoon services include candlelight, carols, and scripture. We need scripture readers at both of these services. So if you would like to volunteer, you can check those boxes on your connection card. Holding a microphone is not as scary as it sounds. I've gotten over my fear a little bit. And these are beautiful scripture passages if you're not familiar with them. So they're a really um, 
great chance to invite others into celebrating with you. Uh, we also need greeters, people to be the face of God's hospitality and of the joy of the season out in front of the service. Once again, you can sign up for those tasks on your connection card and drop it into the boxes after the service. On Christmas Day, there will be one service, 10.30 a.m. That will not include child care. So if you have small ones, do plan accordingly. But know that there is going to be a carefully curated artisanal activity bag for each child to use during the service. Uh, Christmas Day dinner is another River Heights tradition happening on Christmas Day at noon. If you need a place to go for Christmas Day dinner or know others who do, please extend a warm welcome to this literal feast. It, I'm literally supposed to say we need cooked hams and turkeys. I think they say cooked because I like to imagine that someone once brought raw live turkeys and hams to the church and it was a problem. Um, homemade Christmas cookies are also strongly encouraged. You can drop those off Christmas Day starting at 9 a.m. If you have ever been without a place to be to call home on the holidays, you maybe remember how there's a special pain in that. There's also a real joy that comes when you realize that people will come around you and celebrate you just for being you. We can also remember, too, that Christmas is in many ways a story about hospitality, realizing that we have someone special among us and can practice how to open up the best of what we have to give. All right, you can sign up for all of those things on your connection card. Finally, Saturday, January 13th, which is in 2024, oh my goodness, at 9 a.m., there is a class on miracle work. This is a chance to explore how we can actually position ourselves and prepare to be conduits and collaborators with the Holy Spirit in the world and how the Lord can actually move through us powerfully to make real changes in our environments and in the lives of the people around us. So that morning from 9 to 1230, there will be a discussion along with some discussion of practices and maybe even some practice opportunities based on Jordan Sang's book, Miracle Work. Now, this is a pregame for Jordan Sang's visit to our church February 2nd to 3rd. This class is $20 if you would like a copy of the book, $10 if you do not need a copy of the book, and $0 if there is any sort of financial need that would be a barrier to you attending, because we just want you there. All right, at this time, I would love to dismiss middle schoolers to middle church. You know where to go. Have fun. And you can take a minute to say hi to yourself. To, to, say hi to yourself. Say hi to yourselves. That's a good move. Yeah, if you're, if, you're, if you're shy today, just say hi to yourself and enjoy it. Otherwise, say hi to people around you while Rena prepares to come up to deliver the message. Well, hi, everybody. Hello, welcome. My name is Rena, and I'm so glad you're here for this second Sunday in Advent and as we continue our Christmas movie sermon series. Last week, Pete preached on the movie Spirited, and next week, Becca Buncher will preach on Kloss with a K, and I can't wait. This week, I get to talk about the best Christmas pageant ever. The best Christmas pageant ever was a children's novel that came out in 1971 that was turned into a TV movie in 1983. It's 48 minutes long, and you can watch it for free on YouTube. If you need a link, ask me, I'll send it to you, because I think it's totally worth watching. Growing up, I watched this movie on VHS every year at my Nana and Bumpa's house for Christmas. I think it was taped off of a TV broadcast, too. Kids, you can ask your parents what all that means. As I rewatched this movie as an adult, it brought to mind some things about plans and about making room for people who are different. Join me in praying as we begin. God, thank you for your presence here with us today. 
speak to us with your love and about your love. And just be with us today. Open our ears to what you have for us today. Amen. Has anybody here ever been in a Christmas pageant? Raise your hand. Got a couple? Okay. Had a couple in first service too. I've never had the pleasure of being in a Christmas pageant. If you're not familiar, a Christmas pageant is an event put on in celebration of Christmas that usually includes a nativity play, which is a short play about the birth of Jesus. The nativity play is often acted out by children with a narrator reading the Christmas story from scripture. Christmas pageants and nativity plays are traditional for many people growing up, and they can be an important part of a community's Christmas celebrations. Now, technically, a Christmas pageant can have a lot of different elements, like a parade, choirs, as well as the nativity play. But I grew up understanding the Christmas pageant to mean the nativity play, so I'll use those terms interchangeably. For kids whose communities do Christmas pageants, it can be a big deal to get a role. For those of you who are in a Christmas pageant, were you pretty excited about it? It's fun to be a part of something that's special and important like that to your community. Typically, there'll be a Mary and a Joseph and a baby Jesus. That could be a doll or a real baby. Three wise men, angels, shepherds, animals, and all kinds of extras. Last week, I saw a cute video about a kid who was stoked to tell his parent about the role he got in his nativity play. So let's hear it from Milo. Classic role, is it? Classic part? Yeah. Um, Joseph? No. Uh, one of the three wise men? No. One of the innkeepers? No. Um, but it's a classic part? Yeah. Okay. Um, you tell me then. Cause... I'm door holder number three. I'll be holding doors. That's amazing. Holding doors for who? Probably um, Joseph and Mary. Oh my gosh, were you pleased when they said that? Yeah. And what did you do? And I was like, I'm a door holder. Get in there. Let's go. Yes. <laughs> Whoa. And, and and maybe because there's no room, I'll probably be just low, be like just coming in, and then I'll just slam them in, slam the door in their face. <laughs> Is that your star role? I'll probably, maybe I'll probably be dressed up as a door. I don't think you're going to be a door. I think you're going to be a door holder. No, I'll have to wear like brown. Really? Yeah, probably. Excellent. That's well. That's really smart, Milo. What is that? That's so great. I love all of this so much. He's thrilled. His teachers made sure they that he knew how important this role was, and his mom meets his enthusiasm and just gasses him up. I want to high five everybody. So everyone involved in a Christmas pageant wants it to go really well because it's so special. There are rehearsals, anticipation, tradition. There's a careful plan. Anybody here really like a plan? Who like, who's a planner? Yep, it's good, own it. Who here thinks plans are a waste of time? Just go with the flow, man. Yep. <laughs> and who here is somewhere in the middle? I think a lot of us maybe are somewhere in the middle. I personally like a plan to set the direction, but then I'm usually okay going off script if something needs to change. I like to think I'm flexible, but I know that sometimes I can get a little bit prickly if my plan goes out the window. And some of us relate to that too. <laughs> in the best Christmas pageant ever, things do not go exactly to plan. The movie opens with kids in Sunday school saying things that they're thankful for about the class. After a few kids give, well, Sunday school answers, a kid named Charlie is brutally honest and says he's thankful that there are no Herdman kids there. <laughs> At home over dinner, Charlie gets a talking to from his parents and we learn a little bit about the Herdmans.
So the Herdmans are the worst kids in the whole world. They're chaos agents. They blow stuff up, put worms in your food, and smoke cigars, even the girls. The next Sunday, the Herdmans showed up at church for the snacks, and now, through a campaign of intimidation and gutsiness, they've been cast in all the main roles in the Christmas pageant. Charlie's mom, Grace, we saw in this clip, has been thrust into heading up the pageant because the usual director break, broke her leg. She accepts the job with pretty good grace, knowing the plan and basically what to expect. But now, the Herdmans are her main cast. When the word gets around, the church lady phone tree goes bananas, and people suggest calling off the whole thing. They can't imagine how the feral Herdman children fit into their tidy tradition. But Grace says, no way. This will be the best Christmas pageant ever. I admire Grace here. She has her work cut out for her. Her volunteer, serv volunteer service just got bigger and harder. The plan is going a little off the rails, and she still does it. I've found that when the plan takes an unexpected turn, sometimes that's when I notice God more. Have you ever experienced that? As someone who, I admit, likes a little bit of a plan, it seems like God is encouraging me to trust him and not my plan. Like, Rena, don't hold on so tightly. Proverbs 16.9 reminds us, we can make our plans but the Lord orders our steps. I appreciate that it doesn't say, how dare you make a plan? Just don't hold on so tightly. One of my favorite recent experiences like this was leading worship at the Thanksgiving giveaway. It's not like leading on a Sunday service. For starters, the worship team rehearses in this room as it's filling up with people who are coming for the Thanksgiving giveaway. Some are interested, some are chatting, some are running around. A few people will ask us random questions as we're rehearsing about the giveaway or the weather or about our gear. And then during the program, there's a mix of folks standing, but mostly not, singing, but mostly not, and talking and doing their own thing. And that's great. I could easily get frustrated or disheartened that things aren't lining up with a plan or that things aren't quite how I'm used to them on a Sunday morning. But then God reminds me not to hold so tightly to my plan and that's when even more joy comes. That's when I connect more with the people here. That's when I feel like I'm really loving them with God's love. I'm learning to hold my plans more lightly. I have some faith to do that because of the character of God. In Exodus 34, 6, God proclaims himself, Yahweh, the Lord, the God of compassion and mercy. I'm slow to anger and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. Psalm 36, 5 echoes this, saying, Your unfailing love, O Lord, is as vast as the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches beyond the clouds. So God loves us, and he keeps his promises. That's what faithfulness is. He keeps his promises. We can trust him. And while I lean more towards the planning end of things, I'm sure there's a mirror encouragement for folks who don't plan so much. If that's you, I can imagine God telling you, hey, let's make a plan together, and, I, and I'll partner with you in it. If you're a low plan person and God has talked to you about something like this, I would love to hear about it. It's such a blessing to learn from other people and their experiences and how God talks to them, right? God relates to me in one way, he relates to you in one way, he relates to you in another way because he knows us so deeply and so intimately. I think that's wonderful. I believe God wants to meet us wherever we are on the planning continuum and partner with us. He's a faithful and trustworthy partner. Back at the Christmas pageant, Grace seems like a person who likes a little bit of a plan, 
but she proves herself to be flexible, too. In the Sunday school classroom, rehearsals have just begun. Imogene is Mary, Ralph is Joseph, Leroy, Claude, and Ollie are the wise men, Gladys is the angel of the Lord, and they all have a lot of questions, as we'll see in this clip. from there through the rest of the Christmas story from the book of Luke. The Herdman's reaction to the story of Herod is pretty excellent. If you're curious, definitely check that out. But yikes, these kids have a long way to go to be ready for the Christmas pageant. They don't even have the basics. At this point, it probably would have been easier and less uncomfy to call it off. This production is going to be too much hassle it's gonna to be too unpredictable. But they don't call it off. Despite Gladys drinking the communion grape juice and Imogene smoking a cigar and causing the fire department to come on a false alarm during rehearsal, they keep going. I admire Grace here too. These kids were rowdy, dirty, and loud. They did not fit in with the rest of the church. It would have been easy to pretend they weren't there, or say, you don't fit the roles available, sorry. Instead, she welcomed them, was kind to them, and accommodated them. I would like to be better at this. 
Jesus calls us to love and to welcome people who don't look like ourselves, who don't act like ourselves. In Luke 6, 32 to 36, he lays it out plainly for all of us. If you love only those who love you, why should you get credit for that? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good only to those who do good to you, why should you get credit? Even sinners do that much. And if you lend money only to those who can repay you, why should you get credit? Even sinners will lend to other sinners for a full return. Love your enemies. Do good to them. Lend to them without expecting to be repaid. Then your reward from heaven will be very great, and you will truly be acting as children of the Most High. For he is kind to those who are unthankful and wicked. You must be compassionate, just as your Father is compassionate. For me, that's not always easy. Maybe that's not always easy for you too. Loving like Jesus is not always easy. Sometimes it's easier to see the challenges and the costs first. We might think, this is going to take longer. I'm going to lose social capital. This is going to take relational work. And those things might all be true, but we're called to this kind of love anyway. Jesus was the ultimate example of love. Learning to love more like Jesus is a lifelong pursuit. I'd like to pray for, for us for this today, too. God, meet us where we are. Help us to love more like Jesus. Help us to show your love generously to everyone, people who look like, le look like us and people who don't look like us. Meet us where we are and help us to love more like you. Amen. Grace had all these things on the line, and she kept going. She taught the Herdmans the Christmas story, and they were invested. Because they had a different background, they experienced the story differently. And because they experienced the story differently, the pageant was different. On Christmas Eve, the night of the pageant, the church was packed. Even Mrs. Herdman was able to get a shift off of work and come to the pageant, although only the priest noticed her there. Everyone came out to see the spectacle. What would those Herdmans do? Well, Joseph stood behind Mary with his arms crossed, staring everyone down. The angel of the Lord shouted and shoved at the shepherds to get them up the aisle. And Leroy, the wise man, ran home to get their Christmas ham to give to baby Jesus because frankincense is dumb. <laughs> and it was beautiful and moving. Let's watch how it all ended.
Gladys is my favorite. Hey, hey, Every, she, she got that it was important. That touched her. Hey, everybody, so much joy there, I love it. I think everyone that was there that night agreed that the Christmas pageant was wonderful. Why was it wonderful? Because it was different. Why was it different? Because of the Herdmans. Grace was kind and welcoming to the Herdmans. She didn't gatekeep Jesus' story. Jesus' story is for everyone. No one owns it. It's for those of us who feel like outsiders in the church. And it's for those of us who feel like it belongs to them. And because Grace allowed the Herdmans to bring themselves and their experiences to the pageant, and because she didn't allow well-intentioned plans to become exclusionary, I think God used it all to reveal new things to everyone there. It wasn't just new for the Herdmans, it was new for everybody who showed up. This, um, this radical love rippled outwards. It didn't just impact the Herdmans. It rippled outwards to everybody who was there. Last week, Pete preached about God's power to redeem. God can redeem anyone and anything. He can redeem our need for a plan. He can redeem our reluctance to welcome. He can redeem an apparently crappy Christmas pageant situation and make it the best Christmas pageant ever. How about you? Where do you need God's redemption in your life today? God wants to meet you and redeem these things. That's the whole point of Christmas. God sent Jesus to this earth to redeem humankind. Let's pray. God, thank you for sending your son Jesus to redeem us. We need you. We love you. We want to love more like you. Thank you for loving us the way that you do. Amen. I'd like to invite the worship team to come back up um, and the prayer team to come forward. If you're on the prayer team, would you please come up now? And the rest of you stand and join me as you're able. I have some tips for us today, and we will transition into worship and ministry time. Any prayer team folks able to come forward? Thank you. Our tips usually take the form of a read, a pray, and a do. Our read for this week is to read the Christmas story in Luke 2 in a version you don't usually read. We can't really hear the Christmas story for the first time again, but maybe you can experience it differently, a little differently if you read um, the message translation. Maybe you don't read that regularly. Very conversational. Maybe things will hit you a little differently. Maybe God can reveal something new to you in hearing that story in a new way, just like it happened for the folks who were at the best Christmas pageant ever. Our pray, pray to grow in our lifelong pursuit of loving like Jesus. God can meet you where you are and he can walk with you and he can help you to grow in loving like Jesus. And our do is say hi to somebody who's not like you in some way and learn one thing about them. Think about what Jesus sees in them at the same time. Ask God to help you see that person with his eyes. Maybe it's somebody here today that you don't know that's a little different from you in some way or somebody else in your week, but... Say hi to somebody who's not like you and learn something about them. As we enter into worship and ministry time, we have the opportunity to come to God in prayer with our needs, our wants, our pains, and our hopes. These folks on the prayer team are trained to pray and will be confidential, and they'll pray good things for you. If you want to love more like Jesus, or if you want to experience more of God's redemption love in your life, come forward and give prayer for that. If you want to hold your plans more lightly 
Or if you want to make a plan together with God and partner with him in a new way, come get prayer for that. If there's any other place in your life where you need God, work, physical healing, relationships, these folks would love to pray for you. We'll share some worship together and the worship team will lead us in communion and then they will let us know when the service is done. I'd love to meet you and chat in the lobby afterwards. Bless you, friends. striving and way we rely on your great love the strengthening we rely on your great love to set us free Driving and way, so we wait. So we wait. We give up striving and wait. So we wait. Give up striving and.
invite you just to lift up your own song to God right now. Wherever you are, if there's something you need to say to the Spirit right now, something you just need to let God acknowledge, the space for that. Worship is responding to God's love. One way we respond to God's love is by receiving together as a church family. There are two tables in the room and one table in the back. They have the elements on them. They have unleavened bread and juice. When we receive the elements, we receive his body and blood, his sacrifice for us. In Advent, we remember that God came as a baby born fully God and fully human. In communion, we remember that God died and rose again for us, offering forgiveness and eternal life. Join me in recognizing what Jesus has done. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Jesus, we welcome you. Jesus, we receive, receive you. And you can come to the Lord's table anytime in the next song to receive the elements.
God is here with us. This is the promise of the gospel. God with us. Our God is with us. Our God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we ask that you'd send Jesus to us again to receive in new ways, different ways, ways that are surprising to us. Come and meet us where we are and teach us to look for you. So friends, I pray God's blessing for you this week. We look forward to seeing you next time. We're going to stay and worship a little bit longer. You're welcome to stick around, but you're dismissed at this time. Feel free to check in with Rena outside the door. She'd love to say hi. We look forward to seeing you next time.